Hey guys, what's up? It's Amber, and today we're watching how it's made of a baseball. They aren't just playing around. They build these balls precisely to league standards. And incredibly, those standards date back to 1872. Each ball is uniform in circumference and weight, so the game is an equal contest. Crowds will go wild for these professional baseballs, and at the heart of each one is something called the pill. The pill is smaller than a golf ball. It's about four and a quarter inches in circumference. Inside the pill's rubber casing is a sphere of cork. They pour latex adhesive over hundreds of pills loaded into a drum. Rollers spin the drum to evenly coat the pills with the adhesive. This adhesive never dries out completely and the pills remain sticky to the touch. Next, they move four-ply wool around the pill. This machine spins the pill to wind the yarn around it. This winding substantially fattens the pill. It's the first time a camera has ever been allowed to record this proprietary machine, so we can't show you all of it. They wind a second layer of wool around the pills. This yarn is three-ply, and it thickens the ball a little more. For a third winding, they use another three-ply yarn, but it's a bit lighter. The various layers of yarn are what give the baseball resilience, so it springs back into shape despite being hit repeatedly. For the final winding, they use a much thinner poly wool blend because its surface is smoother. This wound pill is called the center. They weigh it and measure its circumference which should be about nine inches. They add adhesive to a spinning drum, then load the centers into it. As the centers tumble, they absorb the glue and the wound fibers adhere to each other. The centers air dry for 48 hours, but remain sticky. Using this hydraulic press, they punch out figure eight shapes from leather, complete with holes around the periphery, allowing them to be stitched into baseball covers. But first, they stamp the date and lot number onto them. Then they wrap them in wet towels. The moisture will make the leather pliable enough to sew. They roll the water-based adhesive onto one side of the cutouts, which sticks to the moist leather. They press two cutouts to the center sticky surface. It's an exact fit. They clamp the leather-clad ball in a vise, and it's time to sew. Working with two needles, the sewer pulls thread through the ball center and up through the holes in the leather pieces to cross-stitch them together. He rubs wax on the thread to stiffen it, because if it slackens, it's more likely to tangle. When it comes to cross-stitching, these workers are in a league of their own. They make quick work of the 108 stitches in each ball. There are 350 sewers in this factory, and they produce 8 to 10,000 balls per day. That's a lot of home runs. The final stitch goes through the center of the baseball and out the other side. The sewer then pulls stitches into a V configuration to give the ball a consistent look and feel. The balls now roll into a press that smooths down the seams. Smoother balls are harder to grip and they make pitching a bit tougher for the pros. Finally, a three-headed stamper gives it the trademark, league logo, and the commissioner's signature. With drying cycles, it takes a week to make a professional baseball. It will be whacked and slammed out of the playing field. 
but that's life in the big leagues. That's it.